Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. Um, we will take a couple more seconds and allow some more people to come in and then we'll get started. And good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our PTV talk session for today. Today, we have a presentation from our PTV experts, Sean Fitzgerald at, on PTV Optima and Adam Groves as our moderator to answer all your questions during this presentation. Before we get started, we just have a couple of things. At the end of this session, we will have a Q&A. You can enter your questions in the questions box at any time throughout the presentation, and we will answer as many as possible during our live Q&A at the end, but Adam is going to help with those questions during the presentation. Our next PTV talk session is PTV Vizoom on March 23rd and PTV Bistro on April 6th. These sessions will be emailed separately to register. And last, if you are interested, please join one of our next web-based training courses. We have BizWalk training on March 29th and VSIM for reviewers on April 19th. You can find more information about these training pricings and registration at ptvgroup.com under events and trainings. And Sean, I'm going to pass the baton to you. Thank you very much. Sorry, finding the button. Can you see the presentation slide now? Okay. Good afternoon, everyone, um, and thank you. My name is Sean Fitzgerald. Um, many of you know me from doing my presentations um, with VizWalk, VisSim, uh, uh, airports, and that kind of stuff. But today we're going to tackle something um, very different. And the presentation is going to be somewhat different than maybe you'd expect because Optima isn't so much a product like Visim is as much as it is an environment and a tool um, to build a traffic decision and a predictive traffic management real-time system within your, your, your city, um, within a research lab. Um, and pretty much anything you can think. Optima is not a model. Optima is a tool developed by PTV to integrate predictive traffic management into a very variety of systems. That being said, um, Adam Groves is with me today, and the reason is my specialty is in the real time, in the in the micro modeling and the optimization, and he is our VZoom expert and um, one of Optima's specialities um, in the real-time predictive world that um, is becoming so popular is it's the only, at least in our opinion, model that sits firmly on top of a transportation model, meaning that the predictive analytics are integrated with VZoom, um, VSIM, and, and such tools. So we have experts in our own tools utilizing our new tools within Optima to build something really great. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of theory, work our way to some examples, and then work our way to some videos. And if we have time, maybe I'll get into the live traffic 
Management Center, but the way I'm structuring this presentation is both for knowledge and introduction, as well as the idea that all the Optima um, integrations that are in the field right now in the projects are actually traffic management centers that exist in reality, i.e. I can't take them offline to show them to you or potentially risk throwing them into chaos by using them as a demo. So um, with that, let's go through this and make as much sense as we can of it. So let's start off with what is our mobility network management vision? So the PTV mobility network management vision that we started with was to provide a, this is a very important, a hardware independent, meaning we don't want to build a system that only works for a specific signal or a specific integration or a specific data source. Scalable, meaning that as we scale it, it doesn't get infinitely more expensive or infinitely more complicated. And software solution, meaning that we have the tools to quickly and easily understand every level of the network management by, pro by providing the right ITS tools for each level of influencing the behavior of network users. So not only understanding it and being able to provide it, but how can it be used to not only understand and but also influence future behavior or current behavior within the network. Here's a little bit of a dense um, diagram of it's 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 a constant cycle. Um, we think of four-step mo modeling uh, in in a linear order, but in reality, um, traffic management is kind of a always evolving system. Um, sensing, acting, planning, checking in a circle while within it having the understanding of the situation in order to act upon, detecting cogs in the wheel, accidents, incidents, um, ITS, loss, damage, um, potential um, hurricanes, um, terrorist attacks, anything that's necessary to understand the traffic management system is important to the whole of the traffic management system. And it's a constant loop that's looping through all of its parts constantly within an environment to work correctly. So if you were to actualize that in the way that PTV works, PTV as the environment, I'm no longer talking as the VISM expert here, but a member of um, PTV as a whole. This is how that last chart is um, actualized from top down. And by top down, I mean from aggregated to disaggregated, from strategic to micro. You can see in the in the blue there, VZoom at the top, which we're all familiar with, breaking down to VISM in, 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 in the, um, the mesoscopic level, down to the tactical VISM and Vistro. And with that Vistro, you've got your signal optimization integrations with some of our partnerships and other um, but then you can see the level over to um, the quote unquote online system, right? The two are working in concert towards a singular goal using different components, right? Optima, the Optima optimization engine for the real time predictive analytics is working at the more strategic level um, at, upon the VZoom model. Um, where balance and epics, which many people in North America don't much know much about, and it's not within this presentation, but their signal timing optimization platforms um, developed by PTV that are integrated in, which you can see the arrows do cross over, being uh, allowing us to actually use our simulation tools um, within the real time product um, back and forth to trade information. And that's really the importance of this entire system is, is the trading of the information, right? The VZoom model has the historic flows, the, the calibrated route choice, the, the regional um, demands, the uh, uh, mode choice, and all of that kind of stuff, which Optima can utilize to make its decisions, where at the same time, you can utilize a platform of um, you know, Vistro, with Econolite or Centrax to work with Epics within the Optima model to 
suggest signal time plan optimizations for the field, either with what's happening right now or what could potentially be happening in an hour based on what's happening right now over time. I know that's a lot to take in all at once, but I hope it becomes a little more clear as we work our way through this. All righty, PTV component integration. Like I said, um, we integrate very closely and that's why um, the, the, the real importance of this. The offline quote unquote model um, and the quote unquote real time model, right? Here you see a couple of examples. I put a couple of examples under each one, but they're not um, the only possible thing. And that that's that's a point that I'm trying to drive in here is that the the, the socket based aspect of the SaaS product, that software as a service, allows us to choose the inputs and outputs as needed to build the tool that we need. So on the offline, you're able to do you know, in, in the regional model, all the things you need, the, the long-term demand planning in the VZoom model, corridor simulation, junction modeling optimization, um, including dynamic optimization models, connected automated vehicle modeling um, within the micro simulation, uh, pedestrian model, accident analysis modeling, and share all of that information with, um, with Optima um, for, more advanced things like multimodal navigation optimization in real time i.e here it is let's put it in all right it's in uh, and then real-time traffic prediction which can be used to actually make decisions um, moving forward so let's work our way into optima so we all know the eternal problem we have the data we want information. And unfortunately, what's happening as time goes on is information is actually getting more and answers are getting less. I mean, but the important thing right now is significant technological developments in the last five years or so, five to 10 years of geo availability in, in, in ITS. Um, when I say geo availability, I mean more and more things are being built, right? More dynamic signals, more, Bluetooth receptors, more 5G towers, blah, 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 blah. So on the input side, there's been a significant increase in the number of automatic and time continuous monitoring systems, right? Um, SCATs systems, um, speed cameras, um, VMS signs that are doing speed harmonization. All this data can be and is usually collected. I know most SCAT systems warehouse all their data. Um, and then on the output side, <laughs> excuse me i have a bit of a cough custom and real-time information based on wireless communication so what can we say why now we need transportation simulation models conceived for info mobility and traffic management providing accurate and realistic estimation of link travel times cues and flows as well as their possible evolution for i should have written any given scenario so Optima, real-time dynamic simulation model and tools, traffic and congestion estimation and forecast, right? So on the input side, you have detector data, floating car data, floating mobile data, point data, um, real-time traffic reports, uh, uh, historic traffic reports, um, partner traffic reports, road work, um, uh, uh, like GTFS, um, different um, warnings and inputs from uh, construction, all of that kind of stuff, um, network input, and then, and then down at the bottom, networks and OD matrices, that's the, um, the, the VZoom model. But basically, the, the, the model is designed to bring in all of these things to be used as data. Um, the, what data to use for Optima? The answer is whatever data you can have, the more the merrier, we can figure out our way to shape it around whatever the context of you need. So that brings in the very first line there, data fusion, right? Estimation of traffic situation 
given large quantities of data, forecast the data against scenarios, which I'll talk a little bit about later. Incident management, which when you're talking about Optima is not only incident management right now, it could be incident management in 30, 45, 60 minutes from now. And then road construction and diversion system, where you could possibly test different um, mitigation strategies based on real-time traffic conditions, you know, water main breaks, what road should be closed? Let's use to see what the what the propagated traffic damage will be based on each road closure individually and choose the worst case, I mean, the best case scenario. And then output, what does that give you? Situational awareness, decision support. You'll often hear Optima be called a decision support tool. Um, it also gives you the ability to visualize. Um, when I say visualization, I'm a bit um, careful with that word because I'm actually an expert in VISM visualization, but in this case, I mean visualization of the traffic impact in, um, in quantity, right? The ability to watch um, green turn to black or to watch the situation spiral out of control in real time by the operator within the traffic management center. Um, internet and on mobile devices um, for people in the field um, with uh, Optima access, as well as dynamic route guidance because Optima in the end sits on a vZoom model. So we have one of the best, if not the best in our opinion, routing models in the world for a strategic, um, based on strategic modeling guidance. So built that into Optima with the ability to generate future traffic forecast. And then you can not only route now, but you can route for what is gonna happen in the future as well. To If you know your route is gonna take one hour, but 45 minutes along the way, there's going to be uh, a, a jam due to an accident that just happened, it can route you around it, which it looks longer now, but because of the propagation in 45 minutes, it's allowed you to avoid that. And that's only the beginning synthesis of how we use Optima uh, for dynamic route guidance, as well as information for passengers, because this information can be broadcast out. Now with the connected things of all vehicles, your Teslas, your um, even my minivan has a has has an iPad in the front that you know you can get information from from the cloud, right? Um, the this information can be passed on to drivers to help them avoid serious incidents, even if they're not using their Google Maps um, uh, guidance system. It could be like, hey, you may be a local, but just so you know, um, here's this horrible accident, or you or put that information up on VMS signs. So what does Optima do? Um, my text seems to be really all over the place on this, so I apologize. Um, bundling different data sources and combining them in an understandable way. So you're, so the client, whomever that would be, whether it's you, um, your DOT, your traffic management center gets one system, one single login for an overview of their entire network. Um, just like you know logging into anything else username and password and then you see the situation with a very simple um, ability to interact uh, traffic estimation um, dynamic model with real-time data based um, estimate of traffic where no sources are available um, i wasn't able to find a good slide for this but when it, what it means is something that we call propagation theory People think that, <coughs> excuse me, people think that predictive analytics is only for predicting what the traffic is on the road that they are on, right? Am I going to avoid traffic in an hour? But using Optima's predictive engine, you're able to do propagation theory, which allows you to fill in the gaps on roads that don't have data sensors by using all the wealth of knowledge that the system is bringing in to make an educated guess 
at what those extra systems are, which is actually very convenient when something drops, like a major system drops, it's able to use its knowledge of the system to kind of fill in that gap um, to kind of help it um, uh, uh, give eyes on, you know, as they say, give eyes on non-monitored roads or, or um, so you have the best overview system. Um, you know, a lot of route guidance systems in major cities only work on like the freeway system in Detroit or in New York on the major arterial systems because they don't have information on the side streets. But with propagation theory, it allows the system to have an understanding of streets that have no data being generated on them. I know that sounds a little wonky, but it's actually proven to be working quite well in cities that are up and running. Um, so what that gives you is a traffic management decision support tool, which gives you KPI-based scenario evaluation. So on the high level, if you think about it, here on the top, all the way on the top, you see um, the heat model. You've got your VZoom model. And that VZoom model has its um, data coming from building the model as well as its data from the field. But that data from the field is also being brought into the Optima engine and being looped through the model to improve the model and run the model while at the same time provide the model with data and the and vice versa to here on the right, you have the Optima system. So the user only sees on their end the one login, and, but on the PTV side, there's a lot of power behind the engine. So it's not a traditional PTV product in the way that it's an EXE that you download onto your system and you run it on your computer, you just log in and you see the system. So before I move into actually looking at this thing, um, we use this this um, this name simulation approach or simulation based approach or simulation based model, and that's what really makes Optima special, at least now. <clears throat> given the technology that exists in the world, is that our PTV knowledge and our PTV products really take the strength and the power behind it. Um, and the dynamic assignment models on the multimodal road networks are um, unmatched in the PTV VZoom um, that Optima now sits upon. Um, so combining that with the real-time data, um, I realized that I forgot to put the asterisks in there, um, and that asterisk was meant to um, be everything in this presentation was that it's connected to external con controllers, right? Optima itself is not creating the real-time data. Anytime I say real-time data, I mean from an external um, source, as well as um, events and incidents, um, both um both from the system um when i say from the system you know from a gtfs or from expectations or from scheduling as well as you can introduce them yourself to test them um both in simulation and theory and um just in general to see how things would react in worst case scenarios uh for planning um scenarios um what it it ensures that the data is complete and the estimate it estimates the current situation across the whole of the territory and not um, optimize one section at the expense of another. Um, reprodu uh, reproducing of uh, formation, propagation, and um, dispersion of cues, um, traffic forecast of situation without remedial actions and proactive decision making and management to evaluate um, traffic situation influenced by um, countermeasures, which means you can, if you get the system up and running well, you can actually test with some uh, a bit of reality, worst case scenarios and plan for them and build out um, quick 
um, quick deployment strategies based on what you come up with in, 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 the, in, in the system to use in reality. So going into um, the uh, system architecture here, so this is um, anyone who's, um, you know, uh, millennial or earlier would see a computer diagram like this and kind of recognize it. But um, the input data are in red and the output data, what the system is spitting out is in the, the black dots around, around the corner. And so the forecast engines, quote unquote, um, and I know it's circled in green and friendly, but what it is is is, is it's a black box. It's our it's our PTV Optima. Our, our um, Optima is the optimization and predictive analytics engine. Um, I say that for a very specific reason because Optima doesn't necessarily. Um, only have to work with a regional strategic model there are different applications for more advanced things in the future and things that are being produced that optima um, can do as well as optima um, is now integrated with um centrax systems in um uh, in um, econolytes, so they are able to process data that's actually being produced in the field. But in the case here um, that I'm that I'm presenting, the Optima engine sits in the middle, and the online model is the ones the large one sitting in the, in in the center, and the offline model, the PTV Vizoom strategic model, is on the left. Um, so the models can talk to each other. So the Optima model is sucking in information um, and consulting the VZoom model that exists of the region while the um, real-time data is coming in from the other, um, other side and being processed by the Optima model, right? As well as the Optima model can also bring in events, um, real-time signal data, um, SCAD, SCOOTS, MOVA, um, Econolite, uh, all the different, all the different ones. It's 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 a socketed API which allows for um, input, as well as it's very simple. It has a very simple interface for GTFS. Um, R R means real time. GTFS. Um, if you don't recognize what that is, it's a Google Transit fee. It's like a common. Um, feed for transit alerts and, and stuff so optima can read that and use that within the system to um do traffic uh propagation and then also spit out alerts to to the traffic user to the traffic management center to to whomever um as well as process within kpis kpis sent to the user um alerts sent to the user Recommendations. Um, recommendations. I'm not going to get into um, deeply, but it's something you know working on. You can set different recommendations based on scenarios and past experience to help. Um, I guess simplify the response. Right. If there's a situation, the system can give you a recommendation that you taught it. It's it's not AI. It's not coming up with a completely new recommendation all on its own yet um, there is still some user user interaction there <clears throat> so here's a little less ugly thing yay SAS based um 21st century right everyone wants to log in username and password so an optima user would see the username and password um and then you see the dashboard there and you can see the time in the upper corner i actually recorded that this morning um the model running and then the model in the center so the user never sees the vzoom model per se if they don't need to generally speaking the back end is handled by ptv or or contractors unless 
they specifically want to be involved somehow. You can see in the middle the the status waiting ready. That's the model waiting to be run again. I mean, this loop is only 10 seconds, so it's never going to get there. But um, it runs the vZoom model every five minutes based on the real-time data that it has incorporated in the last five minutes. And what that means is any root guidance, any pathing, any scenarios, any any future planning can be updated based on new information gained at any moment, crashes, protests, weather disasters. Um, you can even throw uh, wrenches in there just to see, oh, what happens if a building collapses and then is the whole city going to fall into chaos? You know, <clears throat> I know that's a little morose, but that's how the system is designed to work. So every five minutes, it updates the vZoom model with the real-time data that is brought in from the field. And then you have all your different workspaces uh, within the Optima model to work with in your SaaS environment. So just to bore you with a lot more text, um, so the functionalities currently of, of Optima, data fusion of different sources of data in real time simply. It's designed um, for data agnostic open API. Um, precise forecasts for the entire network. The data is constantly updated and forecasts um, as time is going on. The forecast for the future is 60 minutes in 15 minute intervals right now because that's what we're working with. But as time moves on and we understand more about these things, we update and we improve. And that's the good thing about it being a SaaS product is it's continuously improving on the back end. Obviously, we're discussing any changes we make, but um, KPIs and alerts, I, I will probably have a little bit of time to show you some of that. Um, KPIs of scenario management. Um, vertical user persona set, as the Euro Europeans call it, which means you can put a bunch of users within your account to use it. Um, it's very simple. It's not a bunch of license and a bunch of dongles. It's a bunch of um, usernames and passwords that can log into a system. So applications currently, operational planning, traffic mobility plans, pollution management. We have integration with Bosch, um, with VSIM and with vZoom, and, and we can do um, emissions within the Optima system. Proactive sig signal control, adaptive signal controls and optimization, um, both online and offline in and out of the Optima system. Uh, volume estimation and traffic prediction. And, and like I said, currently we're doing up to 60 minutes in the future, updating every five minutes. Again, here's just a bunch more use cases um, that we're currently using across the world. Um, KPI computation in, in traffic management centers. Um, continual real-time forecasts, and that's used for um, incident detection and propagation. Um, What-if scenarios, um, event planning, uh, PTV planning, sorry, not PTV, PT, public transit uh, planning, and uh, alerts. When I say critical conditions, you know, uh, emergencies, events, um, accidents, weather, then you have journey planning, VMS signs, green wave optimization, signal optimization. All of these are being done all over the world currently. So the power is really the integration, right? The, it's amazing that we can run a vZoom model through our method, a 50,000 link vZoom model in under a minute and a 100,000 link in under two minutes, right? And, you know, real time, five minutes, you might say, five minutes may not be real time, but you 
have to understand that the system needs to record the data actually happening, data warehouse it, bring it back to the system, bring it into the model, and bring it in and ingest it, put it into the vZoom model, and then run a vZoom model completely through its loop. And any vZoom modelers know that that's amazing. And we just don't think that any faster than five minutes is really reasonable given current um, computers. We know that super amazing computers exist, you know, quantum computers and stuff, but the normal agency budget um, would five minutes is more than reasonable um, to turn over. And that's what we're calling real time. We've done some tests at three minutes, but we didn't really find any. Um, real benefits from going from five to three minutes it was kind of the same answer um all other benefits as well um mid midterm forecasts and off hour forecasts um nighttime next day simulation of any day in the future the scenarios and kpis are user generated so we don't decide them i mean we we offer a large variety of them but you can choose your own and build your own graph set and stuff that's not in this presentation but we'll probably have it in a future bgv like how to video as it becomes more used in north america um hardware agnostic um we don't really we're never really turning off the possibility of any new technology or any technology that exists that could be brought in um data could be brought in um and it can be in installed on location or on the cloud. Um, some of some agencies like them built the all the servers and all the models in the the location, and some places um, they're they're in PTV um, server, and all they want is the login, and you can really choose either one based on what's best for your needs. So, what's the point of all of this? There's really three major points, right? And there's my beautiful picture of the sun guide in uh, uh, Miami. Um, reduce, reduce traffic, congestion, emissions, waiting times, accidents, um, optimize what's already there. I mean, a lot of agencies call me about VISM and stuff and they want to work on their SCATs or their signal systems and, you know, Maybe you don't need new technology. Maybe the Optima can be integrated with the data sources that are already there. And then with third party, um, third party data companies, Enrix, TomTom, all, 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 all those people or whomever you work with um, mixed together, right? And then think of head. Um, you're able to plan and make plans for the future um, for, for growth. And, and for all of these things. We're currently running live um, in, in uh, York, Vienna, Erfurt, Lublin, Rome, Strasbourg, Hamburg, Torino, Moscow, and Catania, um, as well as some in the Middle East and Australia and in Taiwan, as well as it's used in a couple of projects for specific use cases, uh, mostly corridor management. Um, one of the interesting ones, which was actually presented at ITS um, LA, wa um, was Vienna, and they actually, using the system, were able to optimize up to 50% reduction in, in travel time and 60% reduction in particulate matter. All right. I'm going to show a couple of videos because it's a lot easier than going into the main system, and then I will just... Um, Show a few examples. Um, okay. Let me go back. So here's what, um, when you log in, what you see. I've paused the video right now so you can look at it for a second. Um, this is what you would see within a browser window. And up in the upper right hand corner, you've got your alerts. Those are user generated. Like if you say, alert me if X. 
um, you get those up here and then here's your log in account, you know, like any other account, your Facebook account, your, your Amazon account. Um, and then this is the lifetime um, in the location of where the model is, right? Um, so in this case, this is the York England model right here. And then down here, you can see system info is the York England model in Europe. It's currently turned on into real time mode and it is running 17,047 nodes within vZoom. And here is the short term forecast window. And you, it's paused right now, but you can see status waiting, right? Message ready. It could say like a problem if you have like an integrator missing. So like it could pop up and tell the user, uh oh, something's broken. So they instantly know to fix it. And that could be PTV side or it could be user side. Um, the last simulation, which should be five minutes ago or th this next number, and it will tell you. You can force the simulation, start simulation, stop simulation, um, but it'll run every five minutes. Forcing it doesn't hurt anything, it just starts it. And then from the dashboard, you have four options and you go to, you have map, KPI dashboard, scenario management, and admin panel. The admin panel can be locked out from your users, i.e. if like only the IT guy at your agency um, wants to be in there, you can lock out your users. I mean, it's, it's a SaaS product. It's designed to work as simply as possible. Um, so if I push play, these are the examples done by the Optima team. All right. So there's the York England. So you can see the normal background. Right now, zero things are turned on. Um, so it's got a widget based menu. Um, so if you were to like turn on centroids and links, right? There's the vZoom model. Um, anyone that's ever done strategic modeling knows what a strategic model looks like when it's in its what I used to call ugly mode. Um, so it's laying right underneath it and it has the centroids, right? You can click on things and widget them up. Here in this example, they're showing how to create a scenario. And this is actually one that's something really interesting within vZoom is you can take a perfectly normal thing and you can be like, all right, I want to make a, a concert. What's going to happen? We're having a, like a traffic congestion this week so what happens if i put in a concert tonight right so as you can see the the menus are editable and meant to be like super user friendly choose times all of that jazz right so now like the scenario is created See, down here you can show actually like, here, let me see if I can pause it for a second. You can actually see here, type concert, number of vehicles, type of demand. That's not actual, that's not like, um, that's not just to put on a report. Um, that's actually, you know, trip generation information within the vZoom model for it to understand the pull and importance of the demand. That's interesting to be said because that includes multimodal demand um, if there's transit or not available uh, for use um, in that kind of scenario. I know that might be something a little less frequent in the United States unless you consider um, like busing or, or, or um, ferries to different scenarios. And then you can choose um, what kind of KPIs that you want um, to uh, analyze when you're doing this stuff, right? Speed, cues, total demand. So my, yeah, there you go. All right, so the scenario is saved, right? And now, now it's there. Um, so remember how I said when you run the model, it will 
it will use the information that you've created it, that it's gotten after um, the information that it's last run. So that's why it continuously runs every five minutes. So after you create scenarios and then testing demand, right, in, 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 in disaster scenarios, you run the model again with that new information. <laughs> Excuse me. What they're doing right now is a planning scenario, which allows you to compare different things. Um, each one of these menus we could talk about for an hour easily. The point is to show how intuitive the menu is. Um, so now that they've created a planning scenario, they're loading the planning scenario into the DTA and performing the simulation again. And this video is going to go out. Um, so what you end up with in the end is something like this, right? You see all these little results on the left here for the planning estimated traffic. So this is the area with the estimated traffic turned on. And you can see that it's everywhere, and that's because it's using the propagation theory to get all the side streets. Not all the side streets. You can see some of those neighborhoods are a little dense, and they've kind of avoided some of it. Um, I don't know if that's by choice or not, but um, you can see that you can run through the options and compare and see where things break down, and this can kind of help with traffic mitigation. Um, there you can see um, at that certain point, it takes about 30 minutes for complete breakdown in the system, in that area. And then by two hours later, it's gotten several miles away. Um, but then as the event ends, um, it gets lesser, but it's still on and on. Um, as you can see, we're learning some calibration with side streets. I'm sure there are going to be breakdowns on side streets for an event of that size. Um, you can see the add the propagation and the damage left two hours, three hours, four hours into the after the event is over um, there in the neighborhoods around the park. Here's a different example. Um, let's see if I can play that. This is a horse park with a transit line running in there. So it's the same general idea. You introduce a whole bunch of demand. Um, I'm gonna pause it here for a second so you can look at everything that's on the screen. You can see on the right, um, you can set your different ranges there, um, the V over C ratio and um, color schemes and set them to the traffic for whatever you want. These are all user um, generated and user chosen. Um, and then, you can run through the planning scenarios um, like that and test similar breakdown. And you can do this and test different amounts of transit use and um, use VZooms. Um, see, this is also in the same city. This isn't, um, this is also in York. So um, it isn't that it's a city that uses more transit, it's a park that uses more transit. The other one didn't have a transit line, so you can see here that the road doesn't break down during the event. Um, and these are the kind of scenario planning tools that you can do. And using VZoom and multimodal uh, shift um, within the traditional routing planning, you can kind of get an idea of at what point people will use transit and move along over there. Um, all right, and then just one short video. This is just how, I mean, when you're doing scenario planning, this is how easy it is to add things, right? Click, click, click. These are the results I want. Okay, visualization. Uh, you can change the axes, you can change all that stuff. It's all socketed, it's all drag and drop, and over time, more options will be added. Um, um, it's meant to be as, user friendly as possible in that regard um how are we doing on time um tiffany or adam 
We're fine. We have. Can we go to questions, or or yes. should I open the Optima model? I would probably go ahead to to questions, Sean. Okay. All right. With that, um, like I said, my name is Sean Fitzgerald, and um, I would be your point of contact for your micro simulation and your and your pedestrian stuff. And I have Adam, as always, our V Zoom expert, and we're both Optima people. Um, and we're here for any questions that you might have. Yeah, so if you have any questions, you can go ahead and answer them, uh, go ahead and enter them in the, the questions box, and we'll try to get to as many of those as possible. Uh, so let's see. First question would be how does um, Optima handle uh, data from multiple sources? So, like from detectors. Uh, like how detectors versus travel time or, um, you know, various types of data, how does that handle within Optima? Well, I mean, how is handled is a very generic um, question, but the, the simplest way is that um, Optima being, having a so socketed API, there is, some integration on the front end, but you know there are um, un many understood technologies in the world. Like if you're bringing in TomTom Tom data, we know how to bring in TomTom Tom data. That API already exists. If you're bringing in SCATS data, that already exists. So on the front end, uh, sorry, on the back end of the Optima, there is data feed input, and that data is then through our system brought into the model so each of the feeds are brought in separately into the socketed apis and then through the optima system and then inserted into the model as needed so the integration is built on our side as the model is getting um made um, so if you were to do an Optima integration in the sense that we are showing today, you would probably um, identify all the sources and we would make sure that all the APIs existed that we needed for that. And then we would set them all up ahead of time to bring in the data streams um, and make sure that they're running. Um, I haven't seen one in a while, but the last time I saw most of these on the back end do have a data stream um, fidelity monitoring system, i.e. they understand how good the quality of the data is at any one moment and can flag you if the system goes down. But beyond that, I would have to refer it to our experts um, in in Europe. Okay. Great. Um, Great. Um, next question, next question can, can Optima be used to actively control egress onto highways or freeways based off the overall off traffic the network health, health in, real in real time? Um, I would say yes, kind of. Um, so Optima is a decision management tool. Optima can, you can insert a scenario or a um, decision as I called it, I believe at the beginning of the thing that says in this case, recommend closure of access, whether it's a gate or, or, or whatever, and then it will pop up to the user access requested and then that person would do it i assume that they wouldn't want it to be automated but i assume that if you connected it to a computer somehow it could be automated but that's what you would call um decision management it would say an hour based on what's going on right now we would suggest this i mean optima isn't specifically designed to physically turn a crank somewhere but i guess you could probably set it up that way if that was your desire Okay, great. And just one thing I'd maybe add to that is that uh, one of the cool things about Optima, because you're getting these forecasts provided, so say you wanted to control something like ramp metering, um, you can set that to trigger based on the forecast, so not the current traffic conditions, but what's forecasted to be happening, say, 15 or 
30 minutes from now uh, to kind of get ahead of uh, some of those types of things before the situation deteriorates. Uh, another question coming in uh, about um, anywhere in North America this is being used. Um, I can just take this real quick. Uh, the only current installation we have is a test bed uh, with Econolite um, to test the Centrax integration, which is in uh, just one of the suburbs of uh, Denver. Yeah, um, the uh, the original team is from Rome, and a lot of the integrations, especially the ones that have been functioning for quite a long time, are in um, Germany and um, Austria, um, that kind of stuff. But um, we have more than enough sensor availability, and we have more than enough partners in North America for data. And now with our integration with Econolite, and Centrax, the data is available most everywhere. Yeah, and uh, one thing I should mention with the Centrax uh, integration as well, so one of the things that's being tested in that particular instance is uh, not only is that forecast being provided, but then multiple scenarios are being run with multiple different signal timing plans to see what the uh, predicted best signal timing plan would be 15 minutes from now. So you can begin to transition those uh, timing plans over again a little bit earlier than you would with uh, you know based on the real-time data um, I think with that um, we've got just a couple minutes left uh, we're going to go ahead and turn this back over to Tiffany she has a few announcements to make here at the end all right everyone thank you for joining us that is the end of this session thank everyone for attending and just a reminder we will provide a recording of the session sent in a follow-up email if you have any questions feel free to email us at marketing.us at ptvgroup.com and have a great day thank you bye